Thank you. I can just see past all of this. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation um, to be here and an opportunity to speak with everybody. Sorry, I just have to keep moving because I can't see past. It's a problem with being vertically challenged, but there we go. Um, now, for me, you know, Money Market File is a very important dossier, and I don't think I need to convince anybody here the importance of money market funds as a short-term investment instrument. I think, you know, everybody knows here that there's a thousand billion euro of assets under management. And I do fully recognize the role that MMFs play in terms of short-term cash management instrument for investors as well as for borrowers. And also appreciate the significant proportion of industries local authorities, charities, and foundations make use of money market funds to manage their excess cash. And these are concerns that I've been speaking with and talking to the industry uh, and also um, locally in, uh, in, in UK and in my constituency that I've been taking into consideration in dealing with uh, this proposal. But I think what is important for me and for many of my colleagues in the European Parliament is to understand that money market funds remain an investment fund and that they are susceptible to different risks. So I believe that this regulation should really try and tackle the vulnerability of money market funds to investor runs and the risk to the taxpayer. I think that, for me and for many of my colleagues, is one of the most important aspects. And at the same time, you know, we want to ensure that sh the, there are a good source of uh, short-term financing for banks and for the European industry. So, you know, we do not want to uh, erase money market funds. Uh, we want to find a way where they can exist uh, but just uh, addressing some of the concerns. Now, those of you who've been following the legislative process know that we have altogether 800 amendments to the proposal from the Commission. And so 96 of those were from me, and 704 are, have been tabled uh, as amendments. So uh, it's quite a job going through that many amendments, um, but it's clear from what I see that many of my colleagues uh, on the uh, Econ Committee share the objectives that I've, I've outlined, but they differ on how we get to them, you know. And I think you can put them in, 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 in terms of um, the uh, groups and the major topics. You can distinguish between them. And uh, so some of the main points are not hugely different. You know, they're not that far away from each other. So uh, those points, the similarities are in the kind of assets the money market funds can invest in, on the ban on sponsor support, on more transparency, on stricter stress testing, together with a stricter liquidity and diversification requirements. Now, these measures will make a difference in terms of making money market funds safer and more resilient. I, I think the, the other issue that uh, is important to demonstrate why we've got so many um, MMFs is that clearly there are political differences in the file. The main difference is how do we deal with systemic risk within um, CNAF MMF. And, and the fact is that because CNAFs don't show their real value of the underlying asset, and therefore they are really susceptible to runs from the investors. So um, what I proposed, and again, I'm sure all of you are very aware of this, so I distinguish two main exemptions. 
One is for the retail CNAV MMF, and the other one is the EU public debt CNAV uh, MMF. Um, since the publication of my report, I've received a number of uh, comments, and, um, and, and, I, and I think more uh, importantly to the second exemption, there, there is concern as to how viable it is uh, within uh, the European setting. And the main comment I've had from the sector uh, dealing with CNAVs is that really these exemptions don't go far enough. We need more. I have since made some other amendments uh, which do enable there to be uh, a differentiation in the percentage in the EU public debt, uh, going down to 60% of it being uh, e e EU public debt. Uh, but I'm sure you're very familiar with those. Now, I really, my intention is not to uh, erase C CNAVs. I, I've tried to demonstrate that, that we, we, we see that there is a potential for CNAVs to continue because they do represent the 50% of EU money market funds and many corporate uh, um, treasurers have insisted that um, um, they're a very useful instrument for them. But that's not to say that that is not the opinion of some of my colleagues who want to see complete you know, non-existence of um, CNAVs. And I'm trying to find uh, a, a, a balance between that because there is a, a very strong feeling that, you know, if we convert all CNAVs to become VNAVs, our problems are over. And, um, and I think it's a very simplistic situation and it could have very many unintended consequences if we were to go down that particular route. And, and also could have negative impact uh, in terms of economic growth and the availability of finance. So I'm very mindful of that. But as I said earlier on, you know, we don't really have the option of continuing with the status quo. Clearly, given what IOSCO and others have said and the obligations that we've entered into, we, we need to move on and we need to address the systemic risk issue. Now, when I've met with all of the represent, I mean, I haven't met all of the representatives of the industry, I've met very many representatives of the industry, but uh, I, and I think many in this room would like a very light touch regulatory approach. And, and I know that uh, from my point of view, it was somewhat disappointing that all I got from industry was, you know, if you just give us fees and gates, that would be sufficient and we can move on. And uh, I think the concerns are that very many of uh, my colleagues don't feel that is the way that is acceptable. Because, you know, the past experiences that, you know, when it's self-regulation, the sector has not always been as resilient and robust in regulating itself. So, you know, there, there is a feeling that we do need a proper regulatory uh, framework there. Now, what is this proper <coughs> regulatory framework? Um, th this is, as I said, is where the Parliament's uh, opinion uh, are very different, you know, diff different political groups have different uh, solutions. And I've really welcomed the ideas that have been put forward in amendments to try and tackle the issue of FINAVs. Now, the first main proposal that has been put forward by EPP, but also from within my group, is the Low Volatile Net Asset Value Fund, so the LVNAV. Um, and the second uh, proposal that's been put on the table is the variable share model. And the third one, of course, is the fees and gates. And the opposite side views that are there are, as I said, you know, that all CNAVs should be um, stopped 
straight away. And, um, and the, the other, um, the fifth element is treating CNAV MMF as banks with capital and liquidity requirement and banking supervision. So these are broadly the five big set of proposals where we're looking at as to how to reach uh, compromise. And I do think it is important that we find some sort of agreement on this. And I've started the process of compromising. Uh, and we had our first shadows meeting just yesterday evening to see where we can have some um, agreement and how we go back. So I see the next month will be a process of elimination as to which one of these options uh, we see uh, a majority for. Um, uh, and, and for me, what is important uh, is to strike a fair and a balanced compromise, which is built around you know, uh, a number of these elements. And, and it's important that we keep as many of the differing opinions, the political groups, you know, uh, together as we can, because as you all know, the history of this file has been very problematic. It's a proposal that has been there since 2013, and we have yet to find agreement. It was a proposal that the Italian presidency tried to resolve in the council, and they could not get any agreement there either. So I know I have my job cut out in trying to um, find a solution, but I do think it's possible that both VNAV and the CNAV MF sector um, need to put their taboos aside, that if they could find a way of operating together and understanding, well, perhaps uh, if we can have some consensus there, um, we, we could make progress. So, um, I, and I think also this new regulation needs to take it, the actual economic reality into account. I mean, in this time of negative interest rate, it is not easy to run the money market fund business, and, and in particular the CNAV sector. And with the new banking rules on CRD4, I also believe the appetite from banks to issue short-term paper will uh, decrease as well. So the, these are some of the points we need to take into account when we are discussing the future of money market funds. So uh, just to conclude, you know, it is, for me, money market funds have an important role in our economy, in our cash management, and as an investment tool. And, and we need to ensure that the money market market remains competitive. And there should be scope for a variety of uh, business model responding to different needs uh, of the clients there. But, you know, both models need to be uh, ad adapted, as I said, to the realities of today. Uh, and I'm sure that no one here in believes that the business model that is kept alive is artificially by sponsor bank support or by uh, the taxpayers' money. So um, I think it's important. I'm, I, I welcome your suggestions and your ideas to look at how we tackle systemic risk and so that we can find a, a balanced compromise. Thank you very much for your time and thank you for giving me this opportunity.